Happy Friday, guys, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Dubs. I'm your host, Bill T, coming to you from our headquarters in Las Vegas, Nevada, the studio du jour. Me and George C are kicking it here. We're about to kick off our summer extravaganza kickoff podcast. We talk about what's going to be going on this summer and where we'll be, where you should be, and uh, other things that are going to be happening, as well as build updates and lots of cool things and a couple other special surprises and current events in the VW scene. So don't forget to support those that support Let's Talk Dubs podcast. Go subscribe today at VW Trends Magazine, a magazine for the people, by the people, back on the scene after long hiatus. VW Trends Magazine, go subscribe today. Also, high-quality aftermarket parts built for VW enthusiasts by VW enthusiasts. That's Ross Wolf. Go get you some fresh gear at Ross Wolf for your car. I know I just got the screens for my side draft for my turbo uh or for my supercharged motor for the chop top so you'll see that if it be at the show this weekend and uh got some ross wolf goodies on my motor so i'm looking forward to uh to that and have you guys see that but go support those guys today go to rosswolf.com for some cool vw stuff you need bus deck lid hinges you need dash repair panels you need uh locking dipsticks whatever you need solid shift rod bushings they got it go check them out rosswolf.com so this episode is going to be kicking off the summer, the shows that are happening in Southern California since we're in Vegas, and we're going to be talking about where we will be so we can connect with you guys and say, hey, when you see us out there. So without any further ado, guys, we're going to get into it, the Summer Kickoff Podcast on Let's Talk Dubs. You probably don't know that there's a new Volkswagen out that doesn't look like a Volkswagen. George T. Bill T. What up? Nothing but good times here. That's it. So we're getting ready to kick off the summer. This weekend starts the first of the summer events. We got lots going on. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the places we're going to be because George's going to some, I'm going to some, and then we'll both be at some. So uh, this weekend kicks off our first event, which it's going to be, there's three things happening this weekend. There's the Octo event Saturday. Saturday, at the same time, there's also the RVA uh, Octo's happening at the Veterans Memorial in Long Beach, and uh, RVA shows happening at Old World Village in Huntington Beach. And then there's the buses on the pier, and I will not be at that because I'm not bringing a bus this weekend because my boy Don Ramsey didn't call me back, and I'm not driving down there and doing all that. And I, I'm, I'm limited time for this weekend, mm-hmm. so it makes sense where I'm just going to shoot down for RVA and hand yeah, out some flyers the only for one. I'm even going is because you said you're doing a one day That's trip. That's it, one bro. day. Come on. <laughs> I'm going there and Don't back. Suck me into a weekend. No, no, no. <laughs> I ain't got time. Can't, can't handle it. So. That's what's happening this weekend. You guys will be at Octo. We won't. We will be at the RVA show happening at the Old World Village in Huntington Beach, California. So that's what we got going on today, or that's what we have going on this weekend coming up. I will be, and well, George, after that is going to be the I'll be at the Black, Black Star, Star camp, out. camp Out and some other stuff. Seventh so. to the ninth, right. Black Star Camp Out. <clears throat> so if you guys want to see George T. What do they call that show now? Do we know yet? That's a great question. It's not the Prado show, obviously, because it's not a Prado. So well, that's Black Star is the camp out, but the Sunday show, is it just Black Star show now? Mm, hmm. That's a great question. So let's let me, find this out for the people. Let me look at the Samba because the, the Brothers Ford do a good job getting that going and uh, they get quite a turnout. So I am going to drive my bus down there on leaving Friday early morning and I'll be there from hopefully I get there about noon or so to the event center right inside. And then I'm actually going to stay Sunday as well. And leave early Monday morning to drive in the cold, or the cooler morning, I should say, in the cooler morning. That's what's called, baby. Black Star Camp VTL's Black Star Camp out in, Ju- in Jerupa Valley, California, and that's going to be from June fifth to June ninth. George will be there from the seventh to the. Come by, say hi. Say what's up if you see me out there. Say what's up to George if you see the old rattle can destroyer I on the road. For the battle wagon, the battle wagon. If you see the old battle wagon out there, and then so that's weekend after this one. And then two weeks from now, before I head to the UK for bad Camberg, which I have coming up, I'm going to bad Camberg and I'm going to um, EBI, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. 
before that we could actually just before that weekend as I fly out on the 17th, I'm going to be at Impey's open house on the 15th. So that weekend is going to have the DKP meet that's going to be happening uh, Friday at um, on Orange Store Boulevard, the DKP meet happening Friday, the cruise in. And then Saturday is going to be the MP Open House, and then Sunday is the Bug In. So what's taking place at MP Open House, Bill? Well, at the MP Open House, what yeah. you'll be in luck because myself and Adam Wick, they're going to be doing the MP Engine Battle 2024. And so the Engine Battle is where MP sets some parameters up for people to do an engine build, and it's by dealers that work with MP. These guys are build motors. There's parameters to what they build with respect to using MP parts. And they're going to start like on Wednesday and they're going to have some other guest hosts doing a live stream. So you guys make sure you go subscribe today at MP's YouTube channel so you can watch the live stream because Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, they're going to be doing some preliminary runs for the final day, which is Saturday with the dyno pull. And I'll be on the live stream with my buddy Adam Wick here from Vegas. So that should be priceless, bro. It should be. That should, that, that's going to be worth tuning into, kids, for it real. I'm going to tune into it, it, dang it. It should be a good time because Adam, uh, you know. Adam's he, got a mouth on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely, we will definitely have a lot uh, a lot to say. There will there will be, you know, you're going to have the comic relief from me and you're going to have the serious input from Adam. That's mm-hmm. going to know the technical aspect of stuff, but also uh, – I we I have a way of working with Adam where he where he kind of gets a little bit more relaxed around me. So we're gonna, we well, it should be interesting to see. I'm I'm, I'm curious. That's gonna be a first time try. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what the what the displacements are gonna be, what the what the criteria is gonna be. So we're gonna get a lot of that information, and we'll be definitely giving you guys all the data that I can get, and we may be doing some some horsepower guesses and some things like that to see who's going to come up with what and how close people can get. But there'll be preliminary runs coming up to Saturday and then Saturday at the MP Open House. We're going to be live streaming Adam Wick and myself from the dino room. And so you guys make sure you tune into that. And the Friday that that's going to happen, I will definitely send out tons of links to that so you guys can all do that. And <clears throat> there is a possibility I may set up a camera and stream it from Let's Talk Dubs as well while we're there. So we'll see if that's a possibility to make that happen. If not, uh, you know, we'll be for sure streaming through MP's YouTube house. channel? Is MP's that what it's YouTube gonna be? channel, yeah. So it's yeah. gonna be live stream through MP's YouTube channel. Go subscribe to MP's YouTube channel so you can catch that guys. Yeah, I so think that's gonna be a good one. I really do. <laughs> Not only for the for the engine because I'm I'm curious about the engine building as well. Because right. obviously you have a lot of heads going against each other. And if they had similar product and they had to make that similar product perform, I'm very curious to see how that went. I did I wish we knew more about the rules and, and regulations. Well, like, did everybody start with the exact same displacement of parts? And we're going to get, we're, we'll, I'll have all that information on uh, so for the next podcast, podcast. Maybe like, yeah. Well, what I'll do is, I mean, I'm going to be having a, a lot of that data with respect to, I think they're, they're open, they're limited, they have to use MP parts to yep. do it. And I think it may be wide open after that point, but it's going to be who puts so they can out do the whatever most, displacement. The guy wants to uh, do 2400 cc's. If he can make it happen, uh, make it happen. You buy the parts through MP, I think that's the way. It goes down. So I remember Hot VWs did this a long time ago. They had like a, a, a builder battle off. I mean, I'm sure they've done multiple times. That's actually the the episode that our boy Mark D is in. Chocolate Drop. You might remember that Chocolate episode. Drop. And um, that is <clears throat> the engine build off. And last time that was, it was like probably like it's got to be 20 years ago. Yeah, that like they, 98, they 99, somewhere around there. I would and uh, I think I'm trying to remember who the winner was on that. I don't know if it was uh, the Loffers or who it was who had the most horsepower. I can't recall. Not, I don't recall. Off the top of my head. I always wondered, though, like, because it's one thing to just build a motor for a number. Like, you're shooting for big numbers on a dyno. But, like, what what are what would it be in real world? If you put it into a car, how would it perform over and over and over again? W- which, which builder actually would have got, like, they may have done a better number when they did the pull. Mm-hmm. What would have happened if you would have put them in real world? Like if they had a drag car set up, all you did was plug and play the motor, like pull it out, put another one in, and keep running that thing, longevity tests and stuff like that. You know, I'm always curious about that because I was so disappointed because I saw, I think it was uh, Clyde Berg or Gary Berg was in it. I can't remember which one. And I was so bummed on like his numbers weren't impressive. But I'm thinking like, I bet it's a freaking. I bet it's a monster, you know, I bet it's still a powerful motor and I bet it has crazy reliability because it's obviously a bird built it, you know? Right. But the number wasn't there for the dyno. So I think that's where the problem is. Like, that's my one problem with doing like a dyno shootout like that. Well, you're in luck because I have now the MP specification. So the MP engine dyno battle specification. So the MP engine battle competitors will be required to use specific MP components in their builds, including 
an empty engine case, an empty forged crankshaft, an empty cylinder heads, empty carburetors, empty manifolds, empty valve covers, empty HEI ignition, empty crankshaft pulley, and empty exhaust. A complete list of partners will be published. Um, competitors will use their choice of connecting rods, pistons, and cylinders, camshafts, rocker shafts, followers, mm. uh, push rods. Camshaft changes the fans, game. Fans, shrouds, alternator, um, bearings, assembly hardware. You know, competitors are, are permitted to machine modify, otherwise customize all engine components for maximum performance. No other engine cooling systems or cooling mediums are allowed. Competitor will submit a complete engine build sheet with all specifications and provide MP with invoice confirming the purchase of specific MP parts to validate their purchase of MP parts. So, so they're lim- they they are <coughs> using MP product, but they're not limited to like. So you get to choose which heads you want. Were you going to afford, or no, did they sponsor them? Because no, MP has buy, like stages. You can like buy got, whatever MP heads yeah. you want. This so, is what I mean. Like, they, I almost want everybody. I almost want everybody to get the like. This is the motor. This is the cam. This is a this, and then you're truly seeing the builder at like where can they sneak the power out of? Yeah. When everybody's allowed to choose their own camshaft and their own head and all that stuff, you know, like. The numbers are gonna they're gonna vary so much. I'm I'm very curious about how this is gonna go. Well, I'm I'm excited. Uh, it says the competitors are J Bugs is building an engine, Powerhouse VW, Benton Performance, DNJ Auto, uh, let's see, Tafta Inc., Twin City Euro, B and R Buggies, Doug's Bugs and Bunnies, Jim's Custom VWs, Right Gearbox, Wolfgang International, and Seward Speed Shop. Wolfgang International, Steve Phillips is going to mm-hmm. be the tough one to beat there. Mm-hmm. Steve Phillips, right? Is that yeah, his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is going to be the one to beat because that dude not only makes power because he does drag motors, but he builds a very reliable and strong motor. Well, and interesting, you know, you've got – so the guy, I think – that and, and, I, and I'd be interested – And powerhouse. And I'll be like finding out – powerhouse. W- w- hopefully we get a chance to interview the builders as their motors are getting dyno because they won't That'd touch their cool. motors. It's like they'll get hooked up to the dyno and Jack's running the dyno, Jack Schetti. Yeah. And so – I think the interesting thing is we'll talk to some of the builders and find out. You do maybe like a short interview, but Powerhouse builds a ton of motors, like yeah, a lot of a engines. Lot. And then Wolfgang and I've, I've actually driven a Powerhouse motor. Like Mark Rollins, mm-hmm. who was Andy's pick at our show, Right. he has a Powerhouse 2332 turbo injected, and that thing is a freaking monster. So are they allowed power adders like that or no? It has to be at net because it said it'd be carburetors, but what if you did a blow through turbo setup mm-hmm. on an empty right. carburetor? It didn't say you can't. And let me tell you this most competitions, what it doesn't say that you can't, it yeah, doesn't people matter. will do. <laughs> so I'm curious, like, will John come in there with a set of blow through? No, because he does a fuel injection draw through. I don't know. Well, I'm, we'll see what people bring to the table. I'm, yeah. I'm stoked for it. I don't know. I think it's uh, and and I'm you excited. and Adam work together sounds like a good I'm time excited to for the live stream, man. Because it with Adam, it's gonna be a good time. So, I definitely, uh, I definitely think it's gonna be a day to remember for sure. So, if you guys Junior are gonna kids. be there in Southern California that weekend, I'll actually be. I'm gonna go down for that whole weekend. So, I'm gonna go down for uh, the Friday night DKP meet, and then mm-hmm. I'll be there uh, Saturday for the MP Dino, uh, the Dino Day. Or MP Open House, and then I'm going to be there Sunday at the Bug In. So it's going to be a jam packed weekend yeah. for me. Then I come back, chill out on Monday, get ready, and I fly out uh, Monday Monday night, Tuesday. Well, t- Monday night at like eleven o'clock, I fly out to the UK. So, nice. and then we'll be bringing you guys a ton of podcasts from the road um, as we're going to be doing that. And the process with that, if you guys want to go check out what we're going to be doing, so my itinerary is I'm going to fly to the UK. We were supposed to get my car done, but Unfortunately, with un, uh, unexpected delays, uh, with some some things in shipping, some additional metal work we hadn't planned on doing, and some stuff like that. Yeah, no big deal. Is, it still was done so fast. Oh yeah, like, yeah. That car is, that that car is going to be. Yeah. That he's wanting to have that car in paint when I show up yeah, there, I bet. which is like in two weeks. Yeah. So, um, with with what he's got done so far, I'm hugely impressed. He really knocked totally. it out, knocked it out of the box, and um, it's been. It's been an interesting experience to watch how he works because the way his shop works, he's got like he takes the chassis, blows it apart, has the pan cleaned up, done, paints it, sends it back to the guy who builds the complete pan, complete. And then during that, while that's being done, all the chrome bits out to the chromers. My chrome's all back. It's all done. Uh, Meanwhile, all my stuff's at the upholstery shop. It's all getting done. My seats are done. Everything's done already. 
uh, except for the door panels, which they should be doing now. So it's like this week he's wanting to get the body bolted onto the. I got a video today of the chassis starting and running, mm -hmm. the whole thing's together, and then um, it's then they're gonna bolt the body to the chassis and make sure that no issues, no there's problems. no issues that all the gaps line up good and all the stuff. Then they'll take it back off, start getting it. Uh, he wants to have it in. Uh, they're doing epoxy primer tomorrow. He already then, did the poly prime and they blocked that from the right. picture. Then I he saw epoxies today. it and then he puts a final prime and then hits it one time and then paints it after yeah. that. So he's going to seal it with the epoxy primer, I guess, next. And then, and we may get Andy on here later on this this week, throw out an extra podcast if I get a chance and just talk about the process we're going. But my chrome that I had done here in town, I had to have it all redone because yeah. it was like loaded with pits and bubbles and all kinds of stuff. And the chrome. <laughs> It's really turning out to be an unbelievable starter cart. As bad as the video showed, like the thickness of the Bondo, mm -hmm. the person that worked on it didn't take on any dents. They just filled it and yeah. then feathered it out. So instead of tapping out a dent, they filled it. And then when they got too high, they just stretched it across the whole quarter panel. Yeah. I mean, he was shocked. Like the whole tail light was like a half inch thick. I saw that picture. And then he insane. pulled the stuff off. He's like, dude, this is like five minutes of body yeah. work to knock this thing out. But again, there was a craftsman, and his name was Correct. Mud Casso, and Mud yeah. Casso got all over that thing and did what he had to do. But the it's such a shame that people just don't like. But I think those people don't know how to do that. No, they're a better sculptor than they Correct. are. They, they can't push Correct. metal like they don't understand it. You know. Well, and it was funny because he was showing me the card today, and he's just like, he's like, man, this is probably one of the nicest Type Thirty Fours I've ever worked on. Yeah. He says. As like the lines are super super crisp, everything is just like dialed, and other, and he says the most amazing thing is he can't figure out why there was so much mud on that car because yeah. it really didn't need. It. I mean, the rear panel got replaced thanks to Russell Ritchie. So shout out to my boy Russell Ritchie for yeah, NOS panel nonetheless. hooking That's me up insane. with the rear NOS panel, um, and I'm gonna get a whole list of all the guys that helped on the car because a lot of the guys that supplied the metal, uh, I can't think of their name off the top of my head, but they they hooked it up. They make metal for Type 34 Gias up there, in. Uh, in uh, Germany, they like everybody's just hooked it up with special delivery stuff. And I was telling, and I told, I told, I told uh, uh, Andy, he says, Oh, yeah, this one guy did this, but he found out it was your car. So he said, Oh, I'll hook it up and give him a special deal. And I said, Where was these deals when I was poor? Yeah. Where when I needed the deals when I was a poor kid? <laughs> like, yeah. When I was trying to get, like, Hey, man, can I get some double blade windshield wipers for this bad boy? But, I'm super stoked. It's coming along great. We're doing it. So here's the wild thing, right? The technology of the cameras on our phones mm -hmm. is they were talking about recently. They had the Aurora Borealis that people were seeing. A lot of people took photographs of all the work. Most of those pictures they took, you could, you could get it with the camera. You couldn't see it with the naked eye. Yeah. So earlier this week, about two weeks ago, he sends me a picture in my seats and I, and I picked this, Greek key ribbon because I'm Greek. It's Zorba the Greek, and I don't care. It's, getting a, it's getting a Greek. It's getting a Greek key, key in it, right? Yeah. Well, he looked at it tastefully like, done. He's like, man, great. this thing, you know. So he made an executive decision, and that executive decision, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at. It. He's sending me a picture of the seats, and I'm just like, dude, this does not look like. And I just finally said, I said, dude, I can't. I, I, we can't. I gotta read. We those need seats. more Greek, yo. Well, the problem was the seats. The car is going to be sea blue. The interior is going to be it's supposed to be like a navy or a dark blue, mm -hmm. right, with with some gold accents, right? And as as he sent me the pictures, I'm just like, you know what? I'm like, I called him. I said, I can't do this, man. I, I've got to read. We got to redo these seats. He's like, Are you kidding? I said, They just they they look like a gray blue. I can't. I in my head, the interior of this whole car is built around this Greek key fabric. Mm -hmm. And and it's a royal nate like royal royal blue. It's a, yeah, it's almost it's a like a, like a, like a cobaltish navy, right? Says the two color blind guys. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, and trust me, I looked up. I was I'm on the internet. I'm searching, I'm searching cobalt versus or I'm I'm searching navy versus um, navy blue versus uh, what was the other color? Anyway, there was two blues that I was going back and forth to see like which one's darker, and. I'm looking at this thing and I'm just like, dude, this is not. He's like, okay, I'm gonna drive an hour to London tomorrow on Saturday. I gotta pick your chrome up anyway. He was, I'm gonna go to the upholstery guy shop. He's like, if you don't like it, we'll redo it. I need you to be happy. He's like, but I really need you 
to give me a chance in this thing. And I'm like, I'll give you a chance, bro. But the thing you painted over here was powder blue. The thing over there is like a slate gray blue. It's just not, vi it's not vibing. And you know what I don't want to do? I don't want you to see me get my car. And I'm like, eh, it's all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the upholstery guy's like, the upholstery guy, <laughs> bless his heart, this poor guy, Stuart, he's like, he's like, I want you to love your interior. Yeah. He's like, I don't want you. So he wants his art appreciated. So Andy goes all the way down there, an hour and a half driving to London where the interior is getting done. And he's like trying to explain. He's like, I can't explain to you that this is not the color you're looking at. I'm like, dude, it looks like a gray blue. Going back and forth, going back and forth. And then he's across, he's across the room from the seats, turns the camera to the seats, and they go dark blue. I mean, dark blue. He goes, that's the color the seats are. I'm like, are you kidding me? He says, well, so he takes a picture because there's one, like one of the door panels. Mm -hmm. The seat back is up against the wall. He goes, what about that blue? And I'm like, it's closer. He says, it's the same, same blue. blue. And I, and I kind of knew I was being set up for a trick, yeah. but it still was. But then he took the picture. He took the camera. He's FaceTiming from mm -hmm. across the room. And because there was lighting coming in from outside, mm -hmm. it changed the lenses to get a more true color. And then he, when he looked at it, he said, that see how blue it is right now i'm like that's the blue i want he's like that's the blue that it is but it looked yeah and the pictures look very muted what about flipping the key the key's getting flipped is that a big deal well, i gotta have it i gotta have my key gotta get i'm flipped. just saying the upholstery guy like uh, he said it's not it's not it, it's it's less work than redoing the whole yeah, seats for sure yeah so but are they leather or are they vinyl uh they're vinyl it's a vinyl seat okay all right yeah so um it was just so insane to see the difference in the color that you wouldn't expect yeah. to see the seats. Wow, night and day. Yeah, so you, you see that seat. It's like a – that was the color. It was like royal blue or navy blue, like which mm -hmm. was which. And I was like, I need it to be a dark blue. And then you can see the gold Greek key against the bronze Greek yeah. key. So – at any rate, disaster averted. But, you know, sometimes – and I felt super bad because Andy's been hustling and I just said, I, dude, we – but I got to be honest, they're bro, staying. Change you're it. flipping the thing. Yeah, they're that's staying. It. That's it. That color. The material works. Well, they're that color. Yeah. They're the color you of want that. Them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It looks great. So, and it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a blue. So the car's going sea blue, but it's a metallic sea mm -hmm. blue. So it's definitely going to be a much more, um, a, a much more. I saw that picture. That's dope. Yeah. A, a much more, what the lines on that car. It's it needs that. that. I get. I get yeah. why he wants to put some flake in it because. Oh, no, no, yeah. Well, it catches the lines way better than a solid. That's like my a idea. solid it's not, mutes it's not, it. It's not Andy's. It's a, you look at. I, I love your gear you had before. I love the yeah. anthracite one's beautiful. The anth well, because it's it gray. It didn't pop. But that gray has a cool look to it. You know Correct. what I mean? But it didn't pop. Like no. that's gonna pop because the body lines of a Carmen Ghia, a, a Type Three Carmen Ghia, are so prevalent, and those the way it's gonna swoop down with the mica in it, it's gonna show that radiate the radiant. What, what is that? Iridescence. <clears throat> it's the iridescence, yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things that we were talking about was all the different steps he's doing. So the way this project kicked off, and, and I'll do a podcast episode where I go through pretty much the whole build in the car um, and a lot of the cost of what it costs because I had custom wheels made for it. So uh, a shout-out to the guys over at Rims Incarnated are the guys that uh, did the wheels for me, and those were – a one-off set of wheels that, that there are some guys that Andy's work with in the UK. So those wheels were made before the car showed up to the UK. So um, the wheels are a custom, custom 16 inch set of wheels that uh, Andy and I went back and forth and I wanted 17s. And he's like, no mate, 16s. And I'm like, no bro, I'm going gangster. But he talked me into 16. So we ended up doing the 16 inch wheels and then motor on the car. So I had a, gearbox built here in town <clears throat> that i ship with the car so hopefully that's there's no issues when that when they fire that thing up and get it going um but uh roll the dice with transmission well yeah, i should i as i'm thinking about this i'm thinking i should test text andy like hey while the chassis is on there bolt the seat and drive around the block you know what i mean like make sure the trans Not works you know because la the what, listen on that on the brown gear that they built over there in the uk they uh -huh. got it together and they had to pull the trans out hey, two that. days before volks rolled you know, as, as I was talking to Andy, he said, he said, the one good thing is when your brother gets your car, you're there. Because he's talking about that right. car. Like, there's a couple of things, like a couple of electrical issues and this, that, because they built the car and it hit the road immediately. Right. There was no, because even when I build a car, 
You There's drive it for. A, yeah, you a have to drive it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You should be the one doing the shakedown on it. And unfortunately, when you're doing things to a schedule, sometimes you don't have that shakedown time. And he was saying, like, you know, they're a couple of couple of hundred miles away, I guess, where that car actually exists. And the two little problems that they're running into, it's like. He's like, you're going to have to find somebody to take care of those. You right. know, like there's it's, a couple little issues. Yeah. Yeah. And he was saying to me, like, I'm stoked that when the car comes back to America, like you're there to make sure that if there's a problem, <coughs> it all gets taken I've care been of. known to wrench my way around a car, George. So I tweak and tune a lot of things. T- <laughs> I could tweak and tune a few things. No big deal, dude. No NBD. So. But yeah, that's what's happened with the Ghia. I'm pretty excited with that. Uh, the drivetrain on it, I started talking about the drivetrain, is, a, believe it or not, a stock 1600 is in that car. And it goes against everything that I know to put a stock 1600. But when Andy but. and I were when Andy and I were driving to the Air Mighty show, we're driving in the Dennis Hyde's Ghia. And I'm like, what motor is this? He's like, 1641. And he's like, I mean, it's just cruising. It, yeah. it reminds me like... Back in the day when we were broke and we couldn't afford big motors, we just had the reliable run in every... Well, until George started futzing with the old Type 3 with the ICTs. George in his life with the ICTs, bro. It was the ICTs, the Baby Dells. No, I had 36 DRLAs, like Brett real Dells. Baby Dells. Baby Dells. Baby Dells are different. Those baby Dells are single throat. DRLAs <laughs> are dual throat. I yeah. had the 36 DRLAs so, on mine. Um, and I actually went up... Your, when we were referring to the 2110, I had I had 45 DRLAs on it. Still mm-hmm. had Delortos, but 45s at that point. And we started breaking everything. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Old reliable went... <laughs> I, I, I did the stock motor, and um, we're going to... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty stoked, because when we're driving that, Andy and I are just sitting there. We're just chatting, because we're on the road for two hours, mm-hmm. and, the, and the freeways in uh, Holland are just like... Psh, glass, glass, probably. Yeah, yeah. They're and not like this Valley View I just drove no, over here that no, bro. my not so low truck felt like I was being th- bucked like a Bronco. And so we're driving and I'm like, dude, I, th- I think I need a small motor in my Gia. You know, we're just talking like yep. that. And so before I even shipped the Gia, he got back to the UK. We started talking about motor because I had the 2276 being built for it. And then he's like, no worries, mate. I got the motor. And then he finds a motor like a 1600 over there in the UK for like 900 bucks. So that motor's been gone through, checked out, painted, detailed, all that stuff. But it's stock, dude, from the stock fuel pump to everything, like it. dude. So it'll just, I mean, it's definitely not going to be a fire breather, but it's going to be all reliable. Well, I'll tell you what, that 1500 I did in Eric Black's with the single side draft, it just runs. It just runs. 1500 I mean, with the single, oh, the, the stock three. motor. The, 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 the stock Type 3, yeah. the NOS one that we got from. Uh, factory, factory remand. Factory remand, I'm sorry. Factory remand we got from uh, Yvonne. That thing runs like a sewing machine. So there's something to be said for stock. So I don't think that's such a such a bad thing, especially on the Type 3 platform. Yeah, It does not lend itself well for speed. No. Super short manifolds, that big old fan on the front of it, like right. a couple of high revs, and you've, you, you're, you feel it in your car. It's out of balance. <laughs> I, I'm I'm excited you know? to see how the 1.8 liter runs in the in the Gia Gia TC, the one that occupies my start stand still. That's collecting I'm dust. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. You're killing me on that, bro. That thing well, look, sh- dude. Sh- 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 I got I got J- listen. Chip I got Jack. Jake Raby's like, hey, I'll take that 24 volt charging system. I sent him an email. Hey, Jake, let me know if you just want to send me replacement stuff. I'll just send you this. this yeah, because it's, it's, it's literally brand new 24 yeah. volt charging system for that military motor. And he collects military motor, so I said I hit him up with an email, and no response. So um, I might have gone to spam. I'd, I'd text him. Yeah, I've, I've got to send this thing to. Uh, I got to have a uh, alternator rebuilt over here, and then it's an alternator. <laughs> yeah, and, and then get some uh, get some other <coughs> bits and pieces, some distributor and all that stuff, and we should be able to just bolt that thing in. Dude, We've already fired up, so we know I've the motor the cl- works. I've got a brand new clutch for it, pressure plate, all that stuff sitting over here. I just got so I'm ready to stab. That's ready to get her out. Ready to get in there. So. Let's go. But um, other than that, news that's going on in the VW scene is our boy Kenny Fitzer. Kenny Fitzer Designs. It's you guys. He built. He famously built the wide body buses that you saw at SEMA last year. And Kenny is now building a 900 horsepower wide body drift bus on C6 suspension. I just he just FaceTimed me about an hour ago. It's insane. Showed me the chassis he built, custom chassis front to back, and he's basically taken one of those um, one of those buses from Classic Steel Bodies. Uh, I'm sorry, not Classic Steel Bodies. 
from uh, BPT. No, no, no. It's my guy in uh, Texas. My guy in Texas. What is uh, it? Ron Henschel. Lone Star. Lone, yeah, Lone Star. Lone Star. Auto. Let me get it in just two seconds. But uh, so he's got that. So coming. he's this thing. He's got a bus in a box. Is based what he has, and he has custom made his own chassis on it, and it's made to basically have the bus body the way it comes in the bus in the box to connect to the chassis. So the frame will actually unbolt unlike an actual real bus, but there's so much modification done to the chassis already with what Bill's referring to, or the front and rear A-arm suspension of a C6, which is just nuts. It's super cool. Yeah, it's definitely uh, Lone Star. I think Lone Star Brothers is the one. And Uh, he's also got, like, it's going to be the same flare design that his single cabin 15 window that he built yeah, for he Cascade, designed, or original Cascades. He still has that, that body kit that he designed, so uh, he's going to be working on that. He was telling us that there's going to be nine individual contoured race seats throughout, so when he's out there drifting this thing, My, there'll be eight other passengers that have the ability to come with him. So <clears throat> go give these guys a follow. Ironic MFG Design. Ironic underscore MFG Design. Ron Henschel is the guy that hooked it up with the uh, with the parts um, for the steel bus body pieces. So Ron is going to be building these buses complete. And um, he hooked up Kenny with the metal on this stuff and that's what you're going to see at the SEMA show. So their website is uh Iron ICMD. So iron ironic ironic manufacturing ironicmd.com. Yeah, that's their website. So go check them out. They're going to be able to uh those are the guys that supplied Kenny with the stuff. So uh Ron Henschel's good dude. He's the guy I flew out to Texas to meet one time to go look at possibly doing a deal. On some of the stuff, and I just couldn't get I just couldn't get it down and dirty where I needed it to be. So, uh, go check that out. I'm excited. We're gonna bring you a first uh, the first review of that bus. I told Kenny, I said I need to drive it. Am I gonna drive it? He goes, I don't care, drive it. So, I'm gonna be looking forward to driving that electric drift bus and see what it's all about. But it's pretty sick, dude. He's got the he's got the 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 Lucid motor, whatever it is, the big money. The big powerful Tesla motor. The whole yeah. bottom of the center is going to be the Tesla batteries, yep. and then he's putting like nine race seats in the thing. So it'll be uh, the mo- the monster drift bus, dude, and wide body. So I'm excited to see that. Go check it out, Kenny Fitzer Designs, KPD Designs on Instagram. So go check him out. Give him a follow. He's got a ton of followers anyway, but go give him a follow. Watch the bus build, and uh, Kenny. What you want to remember is Kenny's OG. VW. OG VW guy. Yes, he still he still has he still has a single cab and a twenty three window at his house. Yeah. So real ones? And you're not talking about like wide body ones. No, no, like no. he's got like just... like legit early ones that he's yeah. had forever. And he's like, Yeah, I'd like to do my twenty three window, get it done, whatever. Cause if you remember correctly, if you go back to the cow look issue, I wanna say around ninety seven, ninety three, somewhere one of those issues, I can't recall which one it was. Mm-hmm. Kenny Fitzer had his bus. Well, his bus wet dream was in like 91 or 92, I think it was. And uh, that's where you'll know Kenny from. He had the bus that was called wet dream. It was like a powder blue and white, super detailed chrome, everything under the undercarriage. He was at all the jamborees and all that stuff. And uh, hardcore VW, dude. You'll also know Kenny from seeing him on reruns of West Coast Customs. He was the shop manager for West Coast Customs for a long time. And if you haven't listened to that podcast, go back and listen to Kenny Fitcher's podcast. He's a guy. Now, remember, all this centers around he's an OG VW dude. He's a guy that worked for a company in Huntington Beach. I can't remember the name. Metal Masters or something like that. All they built was prototype vehicles. So he mm-hmm. would get drawings Concept vehicles, drawings, yeah. and engine and wheels, and they'd say, build this for the Detroit Auto Show. And they would have to build a functioning, driving, running prototype. Yeah. And so I, I, I was at a shop playing the name game with him. I was like, FJ Cruiser. He's like, built it. Viper, built it. You know, I started going through yeah. all the concept like he cars. He built the very first, like, the, the physical models to look at, for real. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. So he, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, his brain goes from, like, not like, wow, I wonder how you do that. Like, okay, we're, we got to make this door handle work, yeah. and this has got to work this way. So Kenny's got a mind that's real. Uh, he's got experience doing things in that process so mm-hmm. i'm excited to see the bus build so you guys go check it out at kenny fitcher design go check out the 900 horsepower wide body drift bus being built by kpd designs 
George T., what's going on in your world? Hey, shout out to John Limni- L- Limnios. Limnios. Yeah, Limnios, hold on, hold on. Our Greek homie. Hold one, on, fellow Greek Real brother. Street at the Samoa Raceway. He took the Real Street Championship. Am I That's correct right. in that? Yeah, 2,500 beans, bro. Oh, Peeled the off beans. the dollars. Got it for the beans. Not only did he, look, not only did he cook the pig, bro, but he made yeah. some pork, dude. He made some pork for sure. Made some cash. So, yeah, it's. Yeah, Real uh, Street at Samoa. Congratulations to him. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, I'm. Um, matter of fact, let's call him up. Let's get him on the podcast real quick. Congrats! <laughs> <laughs> this is re- first time we do this random phone call on the podcast. Random phone calls on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna do this real quick. Call our boy John Limnios. Congratulations to him. And so, uh, John, Johnny boy. Yes, sir. Hey, we just want to say congratulations. George T and I are on the podcast. Say what's up, George. What's up, John? So we just wanted to congratulate you for taking the win. And it wasn't it. It was in your up in Eureka, Samoa. Yes. And Samoa, yeah. The same difference. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> tell us about the utter devastation that you laid out on the track over there. I mean, let's talk about it for a second while you're on the podcast. I know this is impromptu and unscheduled, but, you know, just got to deal with that. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> um, it was good. It was fun. It's always a blast up there. Um, people that sleep on it, man, they're missing out. Yes, um, they are. It's a, well, that's a freaking blast. That's Everybody's what I, so cool. That's what I said. I said, I said, not only did you make the pig, but you took the pork, bro. So you, <laughs> you, 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 you did, you got both ends of it. You're holding it up for the Greek brothers up there. And I appreciate it, dude. You know, they had the, what was the one drag racer's name from back in the day? The golden Greek, they called him. I forget his name. Mm, you're losing me, brother. He was the first guy to use some, uh, some <laughs> rocket fuel in uh, drag cars, by the way. So <laughs> Greeks always looking I for that. I wasn't advantage. aware. That's it, bro. Well, listen, <laughs> there's things you learn on Let's Talk Dubs. We just wanted to call and congratulate you on the win. Fat stacks of cash. Fat stacks. And the, yeah. car, and the car held together? Yes, it did. Uh, yeah. Still Hopefully ready to race? out this weekend at Roseville. Nice. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it to the real street in SoCal. Just being on Father's Day, my kids being young, I, I yeah. really wish I could. Right. I, yeah, I was talking to, to a couple guys this weekend, and I was like, you know, this is the couple years that I'm going to have to kind of sit out, you know, I have to pick and choose some of my races, just that's the it. kids being the age they are. Well, so. and, that, and that's kind of, that's always an issue to have a show on Father's Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a family first well, thing. Everybody yeah, 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 absolutely. You know. and And of course it's my day, but... We we know what's really going on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. No, well, look, we we just wanted to call and congratulate you on taking the real street up there at uh at Samoa and uh looking forward Thank to you. seeing you hit the streets next. I know if I don't catch you sooner or later, you'll eventually end up at one crazy week in this year, I'm hoping. So not this year, I don't think. We oh. uh oh, I literally was on this week with uh with a car transport. Uh, we got it set up for eight cars coming. So I'll get yeah, out. Nice. That's what I'm proud yeah. of. And this is a this is a homie. This That's is a friend that drives trucks. So we're not worried about this situation. So you're not That's Greek power, bro. That's not, Greek power right there, bro. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, look. That's how the pimps roll up. Pimps roll up. They could jet set in Bring and your then homies. drive their cars, and then the the carrier takes them back as they take. So, uh, well, does that mean Mike Preston's Justin, coming up? He's bringing a notch. I like nice. it. I like it. This is like literally he's he's unveiling it at your show. So and it's oh damn for real. Cool. We are gonna have yeah, it's, he's never taken it to a show. All right. So we are having a uh so Buddy Hale is building a special award for any car like cars that debut there. So okay. it, so the goal is eventually one crazy weekend is gonna be the debut event for people and we're gonna make it the spot where everybody wants to debut their cars. So which yeah. is interesting being the end of the season, but yeah. that's all right. Well, yeah. listen, people work all, all summer for it. If you're if you're working all year to get this car done cuz sometimes it doesn't make it for show season, right? So we're yeah. doing it we're doing it in yeah. October. Yeah. We're doing it for the late guys. The guys that get burned, they, made, they didn't make it under the wire. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's fair and, enough. That's all right. And then the other thing is part of this since I'm since I'm rolling into this, I'm just going to tell you is if you win that award, the next year your car is on the shirt. And your rooms are oh. paid for the next year, and your car is on display in the hotel. Boom. Heck yeah. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. something to strive for, people. Look, man, we're just trying to make it what we're making it. and uh, Just Greeks doing Greek that's, stuff. <laughs> that's it, bro. <laughs> just Greeks changing the game, bro. Big, big timers. <laughs> awesome. Well, Congratulations, well, cool. Johnny, John. we just wanted to call and congratulate you on your win, bro. No, thank you so much, guys. All right, brother. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Cool. Bye. Bye. Who else we random calling? Because that's pretty no. fun. <laughs> <laughs>
So you Let's heard it here in. first on Let's Talk Dubs. Dubs, John Limnios takes the cash. That's and the, the eight cars coming up. How sick is that? Yeah, eight cars. How sick is that? Eight cars for one you know, crazy we got, weekend. I, I think about this. I got to pinch myself sometimes because, like, you got guys like that that are going to bring in eight cars. You got Russell Ritchie and Spike both shipping cars out for the event. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm correct, isn't there another car debuting there, at our show? Yeah, there'll be some cars debuting at the show. Isn't there one... That you're talking a lot about the, the, my car, yeah, yeah, yeah. My car will be debuting at the yeah, show. That's okay, gonna be the first. Say, like, that'll be the, the first. Should be like Zorba? first American show because you will be at. Uh, you'll I'm, I'm, you're going back up for something up there. EBI or something Zorba like that. Zorba by the Gia. No, so the event that I'm going to, which I can get into in a minute, the the whole process and what we're going to. So we fly out there to uh, to England on the 17th. Hang out, uh, drive out to Essex where Andy's at, and then the next day that third. No, it's Tuesday. So Thursday we drive, we we hop a ferry, and go to um, not that kind of ferry, George. Just take it easy. I say, what's his name? <laughs> we hop a ferry, and then to to Holland, and then we'll take because I can't say Netherlands because yeah. Andy mocks me when I say Netherlands. So we're going to Netherlands, Netherlands, and then we'll drive from the Netherlands to Bad Camberg. And when we get to Bad Camberg, that's where the beginning of the cow look, that's what I was looking up, cow look, um, the cow look, cow look, VW. So the cow look um, caravan is what it is this year. And Russell and some guys were putting it on, and it's going to be legit. So I'll go over the schedule with you here. As soon as I can, I don't know why I, th I thought I had it here. Cal, look, is this it? That ain't it. That ain't it, Chief. But so we're gonna go when we get to um, Bad Camberg, which is the first show we're gonna go to. And because my car won't be ready, I'll be driving the catastrophe, the catastrophe shuts, which the is the trying to buy last the one, time yeah, there. the one that uh, Andy, Andy backed up on me. Son of a biscuit. But. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> so we're going up to, I'm looking for Cal Look Cruise, and it's not coming up. Yeah, it's, it's, I forget the name of the website. It should be pretty so easy. So regardless, you're going, to this, Go you're going to the show in Holland that you guys, that normally you would have been taking your car to, not going to be done. You guys are just going there. You're taking the Catastrophe bus. I would assume Andy's taking one of his Gias or uh, yeah, Samba. He's, so he's going to ride up there, so. The website is cowlookvw.com. No hyphens, no nothing, okay? And the Cow Look Caravan Route says, On Monday, the 24th of June, we're planning a four-day Cow Look Caravan from Wolfsburg, Germany, to European Bug in 10. That's awesome. So it starts in uh, in Chimay Bel Well, it ends in Chimay Belgium. So this, cow this is for Cow Look enthusiasts only to celebrate the birthplace of our little cars. Caravan starts with a meet-and-greet in Wolfsburg, Hosted by the DFL, which George Otto has been on the podcast, the editor and publisher for magazines. He's one of the DFL members, mm -hmm. um, like the Cowlick Club for Germany. Yeah. So DFL will have a meet and greet at Wolfsburg. And then we got very stops planned for four days, finally arriving in Chimay on Thursday night, where there will be where where we will be greeted on arrival by celebration by DAS. The caravan is open to all type one, type three, type and type 34 cow look cars. And uh, so the caravan route. Now the one you're taking, is it, is it cow look? The bus? Yeah. No, nah, it's kind of, it doesn't so, But matter. you're allowed to go with everybody, I'm, right? Bro, I'm and I could be like, hey, dude. <clears throat> look, bro, let's talk dubs comes kicking in door. You know how Americans are. We we're, just show up we're and do making the we way. <laughs> Americans. So we'll go Monday 24th. Uh, we go a little, we have that meet and greet, and then we go to uh, the Wolfsburg Museum, and we'll do a factory tour in the morning, and then cruise to Os Osnabrück, Osnabrück in the afternoon. That's a 140 mile drive. We stay in Osnabrück, which is where the Carmen factory is, and nice. so we'll check the Carmen. Are you guys factory. actually stopping at these actual historic yeah. places along yeah, the way? We're going to tour the Carmen factory. That's freaking cool. So um, <clears throat> I have a meet and factory and a photo opportunity. Is this something to do yearly? How nope, often do they do this? No, this is the first time they've set it up. Russell set this up. Russell and his guys Russell over Richard. there set it up. Yeah. Nice. And so he's going to have a lot of cow look cars. There are two cars coming from Southern California. Well, one's no longer in Southern California, but, but two DKP cars are being brought out there for this. For to this, come back again, obviously. For like, this event. Yeah, they'll, yeah. 
they're going to be on the Cal Look Cruiser. These cars. Do you are, know what cars those are? I do. So one or is. You're not allowed to say it. Right? Uh, I don't. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> One's right. Rick Sadler's car. Okay. The yellow one. The covered. yellow car is on the cover. Okay. So Rick's gonna be out there, and then Bill Schwimmer's car is coming out there. So I'm not familiar with Bill Schwimmer. That's the that's the coral car on the BRMs that he moved to Tennessee. Who's also a podcast alumni, Bill yeah. Schwimmer. So one of the more famous is all, it's one of the Cal Look cover cars. Okay. From the '90s, that was on the DKP lineup where they had the six cars mm-hmm. lined up on the cover. His was the coral colored car. So, if you're a big Cal Look guy, you know yeah. you know Bill Schwimmer's car. So, Bill Schwimmer's car cool. will be out there. So all those guys will all be running together, and then we're gonna drive from Bad Camberg uh, or from Wolfsburg. We'll drive to Chimay over four days, which will be rad. Then we roll into the European bucket. So it's gonna be like from one crazy stock vintage Volkswagen show where you're going to see all kinds of rare, crazy <clears throat> vintage stuff, which I'm going to try to take a ton of video so I can get this, so I can really bring it back for you guys on on like a, a video to where you guys can have like the experience. Yeah. If, you've, if you've watched my video on my road trip to the Air Mighty show, it'll be similar to that. Um, just kind of get the experience of what it was like, and it's mm-hmm. just a, it's just a great time all around, so um, I'll make a video for this as well. But I'm super stoked for I'm super stoked and crazy nervous about it because I'm so busy at work. I'm moving my building. Oh. Things are so insane right now. Like it's the wrong time to be doing this. But but you, know, you have people in place that need yeah. to, that need to step up their plate and handle this. So you just enjoy your time there. Yeah. So the, all right now my now my wheels are rolling about our show. Yes. So I'm going to put this out here, and I'm sure you'd agree with me. If you are going to debut your car at one crazy weekend, contact us. Yes. And we are going to have where I'm trying to set up when we park the cars to have a special row of either debuts or pretty high-end show cars is what I'd like to have it set up as, to have them kind of corralled if possible in one area. But if you are planning on debuting a car, get in touch with Bill and I, or when you register on the show, if there's a place you can leave a comment on it, something like that, say, I am debuting and give us a description of the car, potentially a picture if you could, and we'll see what we can do about, you know, People who are going to put the effort into debuting a car at our show, we will put as much effort back into trying to display them as best we can. So yeah. Do you agree with that? Yep. Okay. I would lo- that, was, I would. that was done on the fly, and my, my brain's turning right now Man, just because they're talking about Mike bringing down a car and, like, you know, buddies, fly, buddies talk about – was Buddy bringing something too? Buddy's having a trophy made for the show. Oh, he's bringing a trophy. My bad. He's having a trophy made. There's a potential – that another one that I know of in the back burner that I don't want to talk about because I'm not kind of allowed to may be debuting at our show right. as well. Yeah, they're, and that's the whole goal now with One Crazy Weekend is what's one of the goals is to have it be all things VW. And I'm and I'm interested if anybody listening to this podcast, we've got a few months to plan it. If you're in the vintage BMX or skateboard scene, reach out to me. We may have an opportunity to do a collectibles toy and literature. I've got space that the hotel will give me. I would love to team up with someone that would like to be in charge of a B- vintage BMX or skateboard toy and literature gathering that would be there because I definitely think it go it goes hand in hand with Volkswagen. So um, I'm too busy to put it on, but the hotel has the space that they'd gladly give us yeah. to do something like that. Like basically like a convention space upstairs like yeah. where we would have our own area. It's kind of like if you remember, if you ever went to the Classic and when they had the, uh, the uh, toy Crown Plaza, Plaza. Mm-hmm. There was there was a little convention area upstairs that they used to do toy and literature show in, so it'd be something similar to that, and we would have control of that, which would be pretty cool. Correct. So, anybody listening to the podcast, if you're connected with vintage uh, skateboard BMX, and obviously, I, I, I in my head the vision I had is you'd go into a banquet room, mm-hmm. and there would be vintage VW section toy and literature, skateboard toy and literature, and BMX toy and literature. I thought yeah. it'd be so cool to do it. And even just to display it, not even, you know, like if you yeah. have an awesome con- collection that just collects dust and no one's ever got to experience it and you want to bring it out and just show it off, you know, correct. Cause so many things that people collect, it's kind of like the only the collector ever gets to see it, you know? Right. And it's definitely something that, uh, I'll talk to Scoy and see, cause I'll make sure riding with some of his boys tonight. Yeah, definitely something, uh, we're trying to, we're just trying to make it where it's a little bit more, a little more stuff going on. Yeah. Just, just stuff. There's a lull culture. between the show. And the poker run that that would fill perfectly. Like if you could go to your room, get changed and whatnot, and then head up to the toy and literature show before the poker run kicks off. <coughs> so yeah, yeah, I definitely want to do. We want to make this show as fun as possible for the people coming from out of state, for the local people coming, 
you know, for everybody that wants that that is participating in this, we want it to be a, a fun show, not just like, oh, it's cool. We want it to be a fun show that people want to come back to. Right. We're trying to click all the boxes or check all the boxes. Well, We're doing ag- the best we can. Right again, now. It, it it's going to grow organically the way that it grows. There's yep. opportunities for people that would like to be part of it to reach out to me at Let's Talk Dubs and jump on and be a part of this thing. Now, wanted to, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to. Um, give a couple. I, so I got a couple of emails here. I wanted to read for people that are. Uh, oh, and Eric Kunth, you should have got your new shirt today. Um, <laughs> I had to get some special it's customer service sand, from Let's Talk beige, Dubs. Some sand beige <laughs> shirts made, and I thought I sent him a triple X with another shirt, and uh, my girl at the office apparently sent him a double X. So it was kind of a well. I, that's, that's what I gave her. So, uh, John Bullen says, Bill, I wanted to thank you for having the Let's Talk Dubs podcast on Spotify. I'm from Toronto area and started listening about a year ago and got me back to working on my 55 ragtop beetle. There you go. I'm also, I've also tried a product from Ross Wolf with success no, and with no leaks, some plate area, the engine, great product and great podcast. So that's, uh, that's an awesome I have to agree with him because I put the Viton gasket on my sump and that thing's dry as a bone right now. Like because I did the top and bottom because I got a Berg sump. Uh huh. Not a not a drop, dude. Yeah. That Viton. I'm like Jason, make the freaking wide glide one. He's like, well, there's not a big enough market for it. Like, yeah. That's all I work on is those stupid CB sumps, man. Right. So get me that Viton seal, Jason. Come the, on. The next one was Dave uh, Galassi, and he says. Thank you. I just listened to your podcast for the first time. Russell Ludwig and Ron Rosevere. Great job. In case you're interested, the first narrowed beam was done by Larry Rick in the 70s. The purpose was to get original BRMs, which had a negative offset, to mm-hmm. tuck under the fender. I'm looking forward to listening to some others. So uh, Dave Galassi has uh, he's got a split window bug. That There's a cool story behind him. I'm going to get him on there. I actually... Steve, who lives here in town with the 67 bug, Steve, hang, had his Steve's buddy is Larry Rick with the ponytail he hangs out with all the time. Mm-hmm. And I've never had a chance to chat with him. I just talked to Steve a little bit yesterday. And I said, I need you and I need Larry on the podcast. We're going to talk about the first narrowed beam. That's so, cool. So how did, uh, so this guy is saying it happened in the 70s. In the 70s. And the last I tracked back and was none like of the early. DKP guys narrowed their beams back in the day, like from that 69 cover and all that stuff. Like none of those, guys, nobody ever cracked up. Uh, no. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so Berg. I like it. Uh, I hope this is it. I hope we found the Berg, solution. <laughs> Gary Berg did one in the late 80s okay. to get his BRMs to fit underneath the fender of 67. Go. Uh, that's what I'm saying. A lot of DKP guys ran BRM, so none mm, of them did it. Mm, none of them. Well, they, we sure. If you look at, if you look, at, if you actually look at the pictures from the '70s, some of those cars weren't even lowered. No, no. You know, and these guys were part of a, another club, Der Sletten Volkswagen, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to talk about the history of that club as well because there's there was a, there wasn't just DKP back in the early days. No. There was a lot a of lot other of clubs, and these guys were one of the ones that did a lot of rallies and stuff like that. So that was super cool to get that. There were a lot more clubs, but there's still one that's together, and that's DKP. (laughs) Well, it's DKP3. Yeah, I get you. Now, next email. It says, shout out from Norway. Hi, just recently discovered the podcast, and I'm so glad I did, both because because I got hundreds of great episodes to look forward to and because it inspired me to finally drag my old race car out of the shed, where it's been sitting for more than 20 years. Last year, my father, who was an avid collector of vinyl records, cars, and motorcycles, sadly passed away. He is dearly missed, but my son and I will pass the torch. I inherited some cars, bikes, uh, some cars and bikes, which both can be a blessing and a curse. What to do with it all, where to store it, when to use it, maintain it, how to insure it all. Anyway, your podcast has made a great impact on me and made me realize even more how much I miss my daddy. And how important it is for me to take good care of all his prized gems. Well, all I wanted to say is thank you. I listen to you in my car to and from work now every day. Keep it up. Lots of love from a rural small town in the middle of Norway. Kind regards, Thomas. So, Thomas, I appreciate you uh, hitting us up on the podcast and uh, and giving us some feedback. Love to uh, see some of your stuff. Send me some pictures when you uh, hear this. Email me some pictures about what you got working. Um, also got another email from a guy, Rick uh, Shamarek, and he says, we make carbon fiber EV buses, and they build them here in Las Vegas. So I'll be reaching out to him 
you guys seen the carbon fiber buses online i'll be reaching out to that guy and finding out what the scoop is um there's been i've been getting a ton of feedback from uh from people on the podcast a lot of people just really uh you know just the the, the best They're starting to discover it that's cool well the best um the best feedback that i get is that people uh that people work on their cars they get it gets them motivated like the magazine used to do to me you know when they get yep. the magazine and uh <clears throat> and it's to, for people to get inspired by listening to this to go out and get their car and start mm-hmm. working on it again um it's super super well, awesome you will you've always said that was part of the goal of this yeah it's it's not it's for me it's not about money you know what i mean and it's, i'm gonna agree with the other dude like i love the history of individuals like Russell's podcast was such a good podcast. The the recent one, the gentleman from Auto House, yeah, Ron Rosevear, that was a great podcast. It's li- like, <laughs> man, that dude had his fingers in everything, man. If he you, had a lot of irons in the fire. So let's talk about let's talk about Ron Rosevear's podcast. What I was, so I did two podcasts with Ron. Mm-hmm. One I called him back in February, and I reached out to his son Mark Rosevear, who worked at McKenzie's, and he's retired and a bunch of stuff, and he's got two sons, Ron and Larry, and they have. Uh, gone on to do things. One of them, I think, it was Larry, if I'm not mistaken, owned a laser cutting company, but they they're they're still involved, like in the off road part of mm-hmm. the VWC and stuff. Yeah, McKenzie's. I buy all my A N fittings from them. And uh, but I think they're they're both retired or close to retired at this point. I mean, their dad's 80. I think he said he's 88, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. He's up there. And uh, so I I did a podcast. So I reached out to him because I saw on Mark Rosevear's facebook he has the picture of the auto house bus mm-hmm. on a drag strip and it's you know just a 22 second bus or whatever it is mm-hmm. and i hit him up and said hey um what's up but you just want to touch bases about your dad who's had auto house and all that stuff so gave me his dad's number he says yeah i talked to him he said give him a call so i called him up matter of fact in a couple of weeks possibly i may be going to visit him uh before i head to europe because i'm going to salt lake and he lives in nephi just outside of salt lake city nice so um I called him the first time and it was just kind of a, Hey, I'm just, this is what I do, whatever. And he just starts going to these stories. And so I'm like, hold on. And I start recording everything. Right. But yeah. it wasn't really a formal recording of a podcast. Yeah. So because it didn't have the startup and everything, right. I, I called him back and said, Hey, I really want to do one from the beginning when you got some time. And the, and the podcast you listen to is actually two podcasts. One, when I called him the first time, which you mm-hmm. knew I was edited out, he says, okay, well we can talk, but I got some people coming over about 30 minutes, but let's talk for a little bit, whatever. So he started talking, doorbell rang. And so, then I played the last two minutes of it for him, and mm-hmm. then he jumped right back into it. But he had just had, just got out of the hospital from um, a, st- a stroke or a mm-hmm. heart attack and just kind of on the mend right now. And um, what was so interesting about that podcast, so many things that people do in the industry now, which like big companies do now, like mm-hmm. private label things and all that. He was doing all that yeah. stuff in the 70s. And the way that, or in the sixties, actually like late late sixties, early seventies. And like, <clears throat> instead of like somebody quits and goes and starts a competitors, you're like, Hey, fire him up on his own, go out and start auto house in this area. And I'll supply you with your parts and do all that stuff. And then it's, it's a benefit for him. It's a benefit for them, you know? And if a guy worked for you, you'd already know if he can run his own yeah. business or not. So there were so many different things that they did. Plus when he'd go into a company, say, you know what, I'll buy this company that's getting ready to go out of business. I'll buy them and then have them just manufacture stuff for me. Cause then, you know, just just a real keen sense of business. You also, know? if you think about his roots, he was in sales, you know, for yeah. Motorola. So, oh yeah. When, so once you're in that sales mindset and you you realize the path to money, I guess you'd say like for for salesmen, that's the thing. It's like, how do I get these people to buy my well, thing or whatever? The, like, it's it's not the path to money. It's the path. It's the path to exposure. Like in my business, it's like my trouble is not finding customers. Mm-mm. My trouble is getting the job done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Getting the good labor, and, getting the quality staff, yeah. And there's there's a thing with just getting your name out there in front of people. And with him, you know, there's – there's, and it's so funny because I did two podcasts. There's stories that are on the first one that are on the second one that I may release as a, as a bonus down the road. Mm-hmm. But when he talks about – he, I think he got a little more detail at this time where he said he bought the shirts, the supposedly blem shirts for 50 cents a piece, yeah. had somebody permit, and they just went and gave them out everywhere. You know, yeah. so now it's like everybody's like, auto house. I got to get an auto house, whatever. You know what I mean? And so – just a lot of little marketing things that he did, plus sure. the catalog thing, right? Because you remember back in those days, catalogs yeah. were what everybody bought from. And so not only did he print a catalog, but this is the first VW Trends, 
And so I bought this after my first podcast with him. That's the first VW Trans that has a 40 page catalog in the back. <laughs> and actually, the, so the Baja that we, and the Baja that we got for. Because uh, he made mention of the fact he wants it on the front of the back. Right. Because as a magazine sits around, if it's auto house ad facing up, it's. Right. So they are all the time. And so if you look at the back page of that they're putting a they're putting a sunroof in a in a Baja. Uh, I turn a couple pages in and when I we got that 54 Baja for Andy mm -hmm. and it's got that he's like, "Oh mate, we got to get rid of that sunroof." I get that magazine I'm like, "Dude, I think that's an auto house sunroof because I'm like they made us they made like a bubble top sunroof for a Beetle and it looks like the yep. it, it looks like, yeah. It looks like it? It looks just like the sun. So it has in the, the right curvature right. or no? Yeah, it looks just, it looks the same. So that was pretty cool. We were going to, you know, just just doing that and tracking down that history for me has been so incredible. Um, you know, getting to know John Marr uh, on the phone. I mean, I could talk to him. He and I could have spoke for an, another hour. He's just an easy guy to talk to and, you know, there's there's so many layers with that guy it was just it was just great you know so i mean there's been so many podcasts that i've done where it's like when someone starts talking about something in the in anything i can connect it back it's like the six degrees of separation i can always connect it back to a podcast somewhere where somebody was involved like the eric meyer one with his connection with vision streetwear and the surf culture and the skate culture and all that stuff and how all that stuff just kind of meshes with volkswagens you know mm -hmm. so i definitely uh did appreciate um getting all that stuff you know just getting all that information and here's a funny here's a funny uh point on that one you can take a look at that when we're done focus george Dude, this magazine's dope i know just focus listen to me i'm here I so when i'm talking things. to eric Meyer, you can't do two things at once i'm talking to eric meyer mm -hmm. on the podcast about this gal that went to school with him in uh oh it's down it's it's the beach just east of Huntington Beach and I can't think of the name of it right now San Clemente okay. going to San Clemente High and there was a gal named Dagmar that looked at like his clothes and asked him if he was like a football player or something and he was just kind of like mortified like oh my gosh I got to wear something different so I don't look like I'm wearing a uniform well that's Sean Barry's aunt you know. He's like, dude, that's my aunt in San Clemente, Dagmar. That's her name is. Yeah, and I said, we're going to call that the Dagmar effect, right? Like Rad Dag clothing, Sean yeah, Barry? Yeah. Look at that. He's got small this world. But he's is. like, he says, that that's my aunt. And it's like, because I refer to it as the Dagmar effect. When a girl said something, it made you think about what you're wearing. And then his focus after that, the influence they had that pushed him to then get involved with Vision Streetwear, to get involved in a little bit of fashion and merchandising and all that kind of stuff which i thought was was super cool man yeah. there's there's been so many different different aspects of the podcast all connected <laughs> and just today i was on the phone with uh, a guy who manufactures a lot of the rubber parts for the type 34 matter of fact he was uh simon was influential in getting a lot of the pieces he was <clears throat> pivotal is this someone else not the dude from the thailand is or the philippines <laughs> No, no, it's a, it's a different guy. So S Simon makes the Type 34. He's on Facebook. It's 1500 Notch. You can find him at 1500. If you're in the UK, outside of the US, and you need rubber for uh, a Type 3, if you're in the UK, look him up, 1500 Notch. Um, we talked today for quite a while. I, and I usually don't do pre-podcast conversations because I want them all to be organic. But we talked about a lot of stuff today. Probably on the phone for about an hour and a half. I said, well, I could have just recorded that. We had our podcast done. But uh, he's going to be coming on the podcast soon. I've got I've got a lot of people from the UK that are going to be coming on the podcast in the, in the near future. Um, and the podcast is, seems to be picking up steam across the pond, and I'm excited for that. I'm excited. That's my second largest uh, audience <clears throat> as well. Yeah, it, it, I'm excited for the for the opportunity to track down so much of that history. You know, I've got um, the gentleman that's involved in the uh, the original Bug Jams mm -hmm. reached out to me, and they said, hey, uh, you know. I'd, Where, uh, what did you say the original Bug Jam? Where's the original Bug Jam? Bug Jam? UK. Okay. The UK Bug Jams. I mean, started in the 80s, and so he said, uh, you know, give me some history. I said, I'd love to do a podcast with you. Let's sit down and, uh, and do it. And so he's getting some things together, and we're going to do that. So just plugging in all this history to me is just is so awesome and so many people that are able to really see 
how it all started, all the different things that connected to it. And then the amazing thing is with Larry Rick, right, narrowing the first front end, Mm -hmm. like how do you narrow the first front end and then it doesn't catch fire? Because I don't remember narrowed front ends. When I had my bug in 1992. Well, think about it. If he narrowed it to get the wheels to tuck underneath there, but everybody it just had looked normal that. at that point because he brought him in. But it didn't because BRMs. Look, you remember my bug? We put a four inch narrow beam on my bug. That. I'm aware of that. Because yeah. with a stock BRMs beam, BRMs have the worst offset. I correct. Hate it. Yeah. So my point is, if someone he, had to obviously it, notice, no, no, no. The fact right? That if he did that, in. because that's why a bunch of those guys didn't have their car slammed. Yeah. Because the wheels sat all the way toward the outside. So it should be, uh, it should be pretty interesting to see that. But it's. There's so much going on, man. I mean, I'm looking at the last couple of podcasts with like Russell, Pat Downs, um, the freaking seats. Like, that's awesome. The seats. The guy makes the the rock and roll bed. Rusty, oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. R- Rusty Lee's rock and roll bed. Rusty Lee's. Like that was yeah. a great listen. Like right. You know, someone who, who took his job because he was already a welder, like a right. fabricator, uh-huh. and then turned it into a specific product. That has brought him everything in his life. That's awesome. I'm yeah. so stoked to hear about and that. And it's such a variety. So think about it, right? We I got a, a show promoter, Rick Mortensen. <clears throat> I've got Jay Townsend, who built the Thump Thump Bug, Pat Downs, Russell Ludwig. Then we go to Benko for transaxles, and then that illegal speed shop, the full tube chassis square back. I mean, yep. there's if there's not a variety on there, and then I kick it all off like the final podcast I just did was. Ron Rosevear, the owner of Otto Haas. I yeah. mean, that's some just like history is getting documented. <coughs> so I'm stoked on that. That's and some new up and comers like the legal yeah, speed shop. Those guys are new to the game. Like, bro, you know, what I, I mean? hope like, they bring a car down. I hope they bring the square back yeah, down to a cool. crazy weekend. I would love cool. to see that thing debuted over here. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's just there's so much, so much diversity in the VW scene as far as different flavors of enthusiasts from drag racing to full tube chassis square backs to bus guys to drag racers you know what i mean like mm-hmm. there is so much that it's just insane um i've been I, there's a, so many podcasts that i've been wanting to do reaching out to certain people and just and touching bases and then just not being able to connect it and get it back to going i, I know i've got joe with joe churko from churko vw going to be coming back up so i've been in communication with him about doing a podcast so there's lots of stuff that's going to be happening, and uh, the summer is going to be getting good. So if there's some events you guys have coming up, make sure you guys email me at Bill at Let's Talk Doves to get your event promoted on the podcast. There's no charge for that. We do it for the love of the hobby. Now, George, you seen any uh, any new cars that have come across your purview, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or anything that have caught your attention recently? Nothing that I can no actually stand I mean, the the type of gear that Andy just did with the dope ass low rider oh, yeah. roof. I mean, that thing was sick. Yeah. But nothing really that's like grabbing me, unfortunately. But I mean, as far as the newest one that I know, that I was like, that thing is freaking insane. Yeah, there's a white there's a white bug that's been uh, that's been on my Instagram for quite a bit. With it's got the Aussie trim on the side, but uh, a lot of people have sent me that as with respect at looking. Being similar to like my the thought of my split the way my split was supposed to be built type thing, yeah. so uh, hopefully we'll be seeing that thing this year. Get that dude uh, on the road, and I just got you got to get a bigger garage or get rid of some of the cars. So um, and I also have the MP bug that is being built on the East Coast. Well, it's not being built; it's being preserved. So yeah. the rockers were shot in it. So uh, my boy out there, uh, Mike Mays, is replacing the rockers on both sides of that car heater channels on both sides of the car are getting so bodies off the chassis and then impy shout out to rob with impy they really helped out a bunch i reached out to impy and said hey man i'm doing this project getting this on here would you guys be interested in being a part of this preservation and updating my gtv bug with actual impy parts and so they hooked it up with a bunch of impy parts for it uh, so I appreciate those guys at MP. And what was really cool that I didn't know MP had, they, you know, they have a, they have a two inch narrowed sway bar. I think that's new. 
Yeah. Did you, well, I got even. Market, I'm, I'm yeah. in their catalog, and I'm just like, I remember them talk about it. When, yeah. Like it was something. And new I'm they like, dude, I even know that. Like a narrowed sway bar. How many people could benefit from a narrowed sway bar? Because yeah. as much as people take a sway bar off a car, it makes a big difference on flattening of corners. So, I got that. We ended up getting a, a beam, some. Front, I'm assuming some, a two-inch narrow beam as well. Obviously. Yeah, two-inch narrow beam, some wiring harness stuff, and what uh, are your wheels on that car? They're original Sprint Stars. So do they have the positive offset? Like well, the, they were it, they were four fifteen sixes like deeps offset. that had a positive offset. When it's deep, dish, it's a positive okay, offset. Okay, positive offset. Okay. And Mike Mays had four four and a half so he's trading me two six for two four and a half so we both have a set of staggereds mm -hmm. and they're both super patinaed you know what i mean but that car is going to get dropped a little bit the motor's already been rebuilt in that car 1600 singapore that's that already had rebuilt six months ago or whatever yeah. and the plan with that car is to drive it back across the country uh if i can i was hoping to have it for mp's open house but that's yeah. it was way it just things didn't work out so um we'll see maybe what rebuilt motor went in it See, the motor that was in it was a 1600 Singapore. Mm -hmm. I just had it rebuilt by a guy up there in PA. That sucks. They should have put one of the motors you got. No, no, no. Well, I mean, the plan is to drive it out here, and it. it's all like impy stuff, like the oil filters on the fan okay. shroud. It's like all like vintage stuff. So we did that to to kind of make it a little more. I mean, it was done like a <clears throat> it was done like a true GTV bug. A little bit of some mods and this, and I'm super excited for the steering wheel because it's got that Riverside 500 steering wheel, which is Really rare. I've only seen it in one MP catalog, so I don't think it was a long time steering wheel, but it looked really similar to the 914 911 wheel. So I'm excited to get that GTV bug. And you never know, George, I may just give away the GTV bug when we get it back. So I may come up I with like a giveaway. That. That's it. I think that would be a super cool thing to get. I'd love to get some GTV person, an MP enthusiast that would just love to be a part of winning that thing in a giveaway. So that's my plan with, uh, with that car. Um, the Gia TC just got to do some ignition stuff, switch that thing out. And the car that I'm bringing to uh, the RVA show this weekend is going to be the Chop Top with the supercharger on there. So if you guys want to check out that supercharger kit, see me at the RVA show. And if you want a supercharger, go check out the guys over at Compressor House in the UK. And you put LTD in the code for the supercharger, and you get 100 bucks off your supercharger kit. And it's I, I love it. That's totally worth it. Bang for buck, man. Man, <laughs> I just showed you guys like uh, in my last week's video, showing you like I'm working on a separate one where we did a very detailed, right, installation. When Bill and I did our video, it was time lapse to set up, and we were going over everything because we were trying to jam it out one night. Right. So that I got a very detailed uh, video coming out with that, and I'm stoked to see what it does because we're putting it onto a bone stock, brand new VW long block. So I'm really curious to see, because obviously yours was a Berg motor, so it was cammed, and it's got beautiful headwork and stuff like that. And so it really responded well to the supercharger. I'm curious to see how a bone stock, like like even smaller valves than normal kind of motor, handles that kind of power. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious, really curious. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I think you'll be surprised what it does, because uh, even with the small, my, my motor has stock heads. Yeah. With stock heads well, that are ported and polished. They're beautifully ported, bro. I mean, I've seen the no, insides I, of those. I got it, but they're stock heads. So when you do force induction, valve size doesn't matter so much. You know, so I think you're going to be, I think you should be pretty happy with that uh, supercharger. Um, and anything else, George, you wanted to go over before we wrap it up? You mentioned the Benko guy. I'm dropping a video tonight. It's actually loading yes. right now while I'm at the house. And it's going over a car that is just too low. So you got a combination of two things. Too low. And height wise, mm -hmm. and torn boots on a transmission, so too low of fluid as well. So check it out; it's gonna be dropping tonight. Ah, so George got a video dropping tonight, so you guys check that out. He's gonna be he's back on this. He's turning into the old man. Can't handle them low cars no more. He says. No, so, I'm all about low cars. Once you <laughs> switch them over to IRS, they'll be absolutely perfect. Yeah. Well, we, we, who are we just we we're just talking with somebody about a uh, whole IRS thing. Just recently, some of the that all and a lot of the guys in the early DKP days, there's that car. Yeah. But I just talked yeah. about that Steve guy. Steve Beecher's Dave, car had a Dave Galassi. Dave IRS. Galassi, the guy that built that car. There's a story mm -hmm. where a guy passed away and left him the car. It was a green split window 51. Okay. But every a lot of guys back in those days switched the cars to IRS pans yeah. because they handled better. Yep. You know, ball joint front end and an IRS chassis in the rear. 
Yeah. For sure, it would handle better. But Steve Beecher's car back in the day, his, his uh, Zwitter, yep. was on an IRS chassis. And I always thought that, like, oh, why would you do that? And now oh, I no look back and I go, oh, because he actually has a car that performs. <laughs> well, you know, what's what's funny is... I, well, before, he wants his car to actually move every once in a while. Before I bought my 60, before I bought my 51 split, mm -hmm. I was looking at a 51 split that was in Connecticut. <clears throat> it was on a 64 pan. It's the reason I didn't buy it. It was orange, and it had all 356 stuff on it like it had 356 brakes 356 motor and so it was yeah. like a classic classic kind of um upgrade like what would have been done yeah, to hot rod your car back then li like a like a build yeah so it was uh it was pretty it, it's funny i look back and i think like man what if i'd have bought that car that was a running driving like when I, my car went to the restaurant shop because it was just like holy crap this thing's rusted you know what i mean so i got a question for your listeners all right. I have an opportunity right now to get a 1958 single oh, cab. Oh, George is thinking about getting rid of his bus, dude. Listen this closely. This is a heartbreaker to me because I love my bus. I think my bus is dope on a <coughs> you rope. you have a picture of the single cab? I don't. But this is a this is an original patina. It's very patina. It's not, it has not lived a pristine life. It's a truck that lived a truck life. But it's an original to Las Vegas. Sunland VW 1958 single cab with original hoops and bows. And uh, I'll... It's stock. It's stock as stock gets. And I've had an opportunity to trade my bus straight across for it. Now, my bus is forward disc braked, IRS converted, 2332, BBS LMs, and I have a lot of work into my bus. I want to know. Reach out to me on Instagram or, you know, comment on I'm this gonna, podcast, whatever it is. I'm, <coughs> I'm going to put a poll up on Let's Talk. Dublin Should tag I trade it. my <laughs> bus? which is now a, a serious road give me, warrior. Give me the pros and cons, George. What's making you think about... It's a, it's a freaking 58 single cab that's original, well, and it's it? beautiful, and it's like it's a Vegas car. And you have to understand, you're like, you people out there don't get what Vegas cars are like. They're not rot they're not rotted. Like, his floors in the front are clean. Like, the treasure chest area is clean. It's dirty. It's 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 been a truck, so it's got dents on all four corners and whatnot. Right. Both pressed bumpers are present. And I don't know. It's freaking cool. And I got this inner dilemma because I love my bus. And my bus is the poop to me right now. Like, I have it so dialed right now. Right. To go back to zero would kill me. But the base I'd be working off of zero is a really cool base. Yeah. So Bill's going to set up I, a poll just, on I, Let's I mean, Talk just, Dubs on Instagram. I'm just, I'm just trying to think, like, if you're... Like, what is making you want to, like, what makes you want a single cab more than a bus? Like, a bus you can haul stuff in, a bus you can okay. sleep in. Now, I've had a single cab in the past. I had a 62, mm -hmm. and they are not as convenient as my bus. You know, like, <laughs> there, there is a difference there. So, but I always have loved single cabs. They've always been, single cabs and 15 windows are my favorite. They're two very different cars, but single cabs... Just to, I have a soft spot in my heart for him. Right. And it's a super cool single cab. Like I said, it's rough. It's a truck, but it's an original 58. He has the numbers matching motor for it, everything. Well, so and I got a little bit of a personal dilemma. I need you guys to let us know on Let's Talk Dubs on Instagram. Bill's going to put up a post, a poll, and you let us know what you think. Yeah, I mean, and, and so if you got, so your bus right now, lowered IRS 2276. 2332. 2332. A lot of upgrades, oil Hold cooling on. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the remote cooler. You've got the suspension. You've got welded spindles. you got yeah all the stuff done. What are you going to do if you get this double cab? With the single cab? It would, the single cab. It me. would get upgraded, like rebuilt. I, I would call it a mechanical restoration, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, it would be left stock. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lower it. It would actually go the other way. I would contemplate raising it, you know. Yeah. To to use it more for uh off road or just not off road but camping. But then it's like I don't have my bed anymore. When I go camping now, my bus is my bedroom. I wouldn't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. But the it does have hoops and bows to where I could put like tailgate uh, stuff the in the bed, back. The old bed camping setup. Kind of like a homeless guy. I am wow. I am torn right now because I love my freaking bus. And you but love, the opportunity you to get that single, single cab because I think about it like Okay, my bus is just Put a six-two panel. One of them stalkers in there. One of them stalkers in there with a little supercharger. He he bought the motor from off a buggy. Oh, did he? It's already in it. Oh, he put that motor in it. It's already in and it. And how'd that motor run? 
right hang on, like it's a 1600 yeah. like a sewing machine like a sewing machine yeah yeah it ran fine it's a, like i was driving it the throttle pedal is super heavy the freaking carb sticks open and i'm just like i open the engine compartment and i know it's that brand new motor and it doesn't look like a brand new motor it's like drive me crazy because like like through all the tins on it another dirty. shop put it on put it in town and it's the kind of sh- and this is not to bag on them, but this is just it's a, the kind of shop that's just gonna take your stuff and put it on there and like right, not gonna clean no it. f's not given, lest you shoot it out the door. Again, <laughs> we ain't get, though, we ain't building pianos, you know, <laughs> even though it's a brand new NOS long block. Like the care that I would have put in it is not put into it, but I also have the ability to fix that. Like we ain't building pianos, lady. You know? Yeah, no, I hear you, dude. It's a, it's a, it's a tough torn. one because it is a brand torn. new long block too now. Yeah, but the gearbox is roached. So I don't like that. I don't want to have to get into, which wow. I do have a large nut RGB core in my back, and that would be getting rebuilt for it. But And funny, I, I, I honestly believe <laughs> a lot of those transaxles, mm-hmm. the RGBs especially, there's probably nothing wrong with them because they're so... This grind's going in a second. That's no, no, what's wrong no, with it. No, I'm talking it. about yeah. like the, one you, the ones you have in the back, probably. Yeah. I know every RGB I've ever owned. There's nothing wrong with that. I just took it out, like you slamming know? his bus. Well, I was telling people this, like... A, a, a VW transaxle is super strong. Like if it's an original transaxle mm-hmm. and they didn't have a big motor against it, they didn't, and, and it had intact boots its entire life, right, you know? Right, didn't run at low gear. There's right. a good chance you could put fresh fluid in those and there you'll have years of trouble-free yeah. driving with it. But in my experience with VWs, about 95% of the cars that come in and get on my rack have torn boots that people don't pay attention to. And they just kind of like, once it stops leaking... They stop worrying about, it. <laughs> and the reason to stop leaking is because now yeah. the fluid level has dropped below that. So, well, I definitely uh, we'll put up a poll and see what George, yeah. see what you guys, I know think. what you guys think. Uh, also, want to give a couple shout outs. Mark Lasky uh, picked up some merch. Appreciate him. He's definitely uh, a guy's on the podcast. Probably gave him a shout out last week, but you know I'm doing it again. So, Mark, have La- another one, brother. Mark, have another one. Mark Lasky and. Uh, who else here? Let's see. Let's see. I got uh, Paul Iozio. Paul Iozio hooked it up, picked up some merch from from. You gave me a shout out last boy. week, too. And, you know, funny enough, he started listening. He's like, dude, I started listening to your podcast. He's like, I listen to it every day in my shop. Mm-hmm. He's like, you have so many episodes, and I just got a system set up in the shop where I can listen to this. Yeah. And he's like. I'm, uh, I'm hearing from multiple people that they just started listening to the podcast. Yeah. Like one of them being our friend, Eric Black, who like, right. who's actually been mentioned on the podcast multiple times, but never was a listener. Mm-hmm. Well, now he's like, bro, I just got done listening to the episode with you and your brother. I'm this and that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So now he's a listener. Yeah, and it. the great thing about having as many episodes as you, what do you got? Two step, two, what do you got? Two, or, this is going to be 269. So 269. That's, and usually they average an hour. Yeah. There's a lot of listening time oh, there for people yeah. to catch up on. So that's oh, a great yeah. thing is like you can go back and start from the beginning if you want to. You know, I did that on a couple of podcasts that I caught later on, like they had been going for a year or so. Right. And you have that downtime in between weeks of an episode coming out. Mm-hmm. I'd go back and like, let's start at the beginning and take it all the way up. So you kind of get caught up on all the little. And and I don't quirks. know if I, if I give a shout out to my guy at Speedo King about rebuilding those 68 Speedos for me, but uh, he did two of them. I didn't get a hookup. I, it's not like he gave me, I'll oh, give me a bro deal and I'll give you a shout yeah. out. He just did super clean work, so I'd like to give him a shout out, Speedo King. Yep. Um, I got his info, shot two Speedos to him. He redid my 268 Speedos for my chop top and uh, did a great job. So uh, if you guys are looking to have some Speedos restored, he's your guy. He's also a Vespa, like a Vespa, <laughs> another scooter dude. So That's cool. Uh, hit him up if you guys need uh, need some Speedo work done, man. He's a... He's a good dude. I have my MP gauges I've been looking at. Mm-hmm. And I have the MP gauges that you gave me that were left in the Baja that was in front of your shop that one time in yep. my display case. And I, so there's two different sets of MP gauges. Mm-hmm. There's like orange needle ones, which I have in that cart, and then white needle ones. And the white needle ones have an oil pressure line that actually takes the line, goes all the way yeah. back to your thing. It's but manual. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna put I was gonna switch out the MP gauges and put uh, those MP gauges in, and then I'm like, no, nah, I just need to send these off and have these redone. So I may send them over to my. But guy there's also Speedo workarounds King. for that because you can make it an electric one, right? There's ways to do that. Right, and I was half tempted. Yeah. I was half tempted <clears throat> to just buy a set of the new MP gauges and put mm-hmm. them in there. Yeah, but that would look cool. I kind of like. I kind of like. I think it's kind of cool the the old one. So we'll see. Yeah. We're working on tons of things. Give those shout outs to those guys. If you guys, let's see real quick if we have. Uh, uh, I have a, a 
gauge that uh, I got from Dave used to work at Butcher Speed Shop, if you remember Dave. Yes. Uh, so he get, he just came out of my shop one day, just dropped all the stuff on me, like, here, if you can use it, use it. And one of them was this, says it says VW All Electric 3, and it's a, a head temp sensor, an oil pressure sensor, and a tachometer all in one gauge that's specifically made for VWs. But I have none of the sending units for it, and it's brand new, brand new. So I'd like to give that to somebody. It's definitely something from the 60s or the 70s. I'd like to give that to somebody to figure out what sending units it needs for well, each send, one of them. Send me, send me a picture and we'll get it uh, situated. Yeah. Well, actually, so according to, because there are some podcast episodes that I didn't number. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so according to Apple, I have 272 podcasts out, but there's yeah. we're, we're numbered up to two, yeah, some of them 280. Weren't. Now you got you got Bruce City Podcast. He's uh, trying to... Um, Prescott Phillips trying to do it, is putting a podcast together uh, that he's had. So if you guys want to check it out, you know, go listen to that podcast. I'm all about everybody supporting the scene. And then there's another one where you can catch your boy Bill on. It was called Air Cooled Legends. Uh, so there's lots of listening content out there. Um, none with 272 podcasts out. So there's a lot of road to make up. But hey, there's plenty of room out there in the hobby. And uh, hopefully these guys do some interesting stuff that's a little different than what I do. But, yeah. um, you know, the more the merrier and uh you have your niche you have your market you have your lane already like yes yeah. i'm not i'm the, yeah. yeah last thing i'm the, the last thing i'm is worried it's so. not a feast or famine thing no. there's room there's enough people in the scene to where there's a, a, you can have multiple podcasts and it's not going to affect the other well my son let me know my son said to me how many podcasts do you have dad now mind you he's probably never listened to one of them. <laughs> not one and I said, 200 and 270 some podcasts, 260 some podcasts. Did he, he says, say, dang? He said, the average podcast never makes it past 21 episodes. Yeah. Because people start them and then like people aren't listening or th- it's also a commitment. Obviously, I just fired up the YouTube channel. I, because it's like of FTJ, bro. Because <laughs> of what I do, job. it's not like I can, re- I've tried to release a video every week and sometimes like there's no conclusion to that video. I can't release that this week kind of thing, you know? So, I have not been able to fire off a video every week. Sounds like, an opportunity, sounds like an opportunity to leave cliffhangers. Well, I, that's what I got to do with this week. next week. That's what I do. I, I had to start doing that because this job isn't finished either. So we're going to we're gonna start doing not cliffhangers, but like, hey, we got this part done. Next part week we're one. doing the motor. Part two. So we're going to be cracking into that. So like, and this way they get, they get to look at like the reality of what it takes to do this kind of stuff. I'm going to try know? to put some pictures of my feet out, bro. So that's what I'm going to do. See if I get maybe a only feet page go. going or something trying to make tell me a little side money doing that. busting stuff was like because i put a thing up saying like you know thanks to the people that subscribe yeah and he's like what are subscribers and i said people who you know subscribe to my channel and he says does it cost anything i said no but my only fans is a separate thing <laughs> yeah and so uh yeah dave dave, Mears. dave i yeah. gotta get dave on the podcast he's got a cool for story sure. so we're for sure gonna get for a bus sure. and stuff i got so many guys to get on the podcast that we're gonna be working on uh, sitting down with a bunch of these dudes and getting you made his reel today. Some of their history, yeah, yeah. That yeah. little thing he did. I said, "Oh, look at Bill the, the highlight reel. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was me. That was me and Dave, dude. We're across the line. We're floating where we shouldn't have been in the VIP section at the VW event, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's him, dude. Me and him just both illegally behind the behind the lines, dude. Me with a phony bracelet and him just bareback in it, dude. That's He's it. just in there walking around. So, what are you shout out to leave? my boy Bus and stuff, <laughs> Dave. Uh, we'll get you on the podcast coming up here soon, man. So, I look forward to it. Uh, again, guys, you want to support the podcast, go to let's talk dubs.com. Click on the merch or click on the store tab, pick up some merch, support your favorite podcast. And don't forget October 3rd through the 5th, one crazy weekend. Go register. Let's talk dubs.com today. I'll be handing out flyers this weekend at the RVA event. So make sure that you guys know to get set up for one crazy weekend. So, and let us know if you want to debut a car, give us a heads up on that. We will. We're going to try and accommodate as many debuts as possible. Correct. That'd be freaking awesome. Correct. There's going to be a special award for debut vehicles that are going to be there. And it'll be that, that award will be handled by Buddy Hale and Andy Finch. It'll be kind of working. Well, there, there's going to be, again, and it doesn't have to be a cow look. It doesn't have to be this. It's just got to be a car that's debuted and is cool. That's it. It's got to be. It's got cool to be cool undeniable. Cool yeah. is undeniable. So, well. I appreciate you guys for listening. Make sure you guys go subscribe to George's YouTube channel. That's The Wagon on YouTube. You can check out my YouTube channel, which is Let's Talk Dubs, obviously. 
And uh, I think anything else, George C. And just so they know, it's wagon with a G E N, like your Volkswagen oh, says. Oh, wagon with a G E. Yeah, don't be spelling. You spell wagon. Don't be spelling. Don't, don't be spelling wagon. So, until next week, guys. Later. You probably don't know that there's a new Volkswagen out that doesn't look like a Volkswagen. <laughs> Like.